I don't really talk about it much, but my first major in college back in 2004 was history. American history specifically, but I did dabble into the European and world histories for a little while anyway. And one of the most fascinating periods of history is the era in history that our game takes place in, the time of three kingdoms in China. History was very quick to take me. It itched parts of my imagination that no other class could ever get close to. I was a kid who really enjoyed not only writing and reading, but the tabletop experience, Dungeons and Dragons. I got into it very early in my life, when I was only 13 years old. And while the two may seem vastly different initially, upon closer inspection, you can see just how heavily world history influenced Dungeons and Dragons. Now, what does Dungeons and Dragons and history have to do with Total War Three Kingdoms? Well. Total War Three Kingdoms is a grand strategy game, where not only will we be managing an entire army in combat on a micro level in an RTS fashion, and in the grander scheme of things, we'll also be managing things like our state's economy, our country's borders, diplomacy relations with other generals and rulers in this time period. You see, the time of the Three Kingdoms in China is very similar to Game of Thrones. China is divided heavily, and no real ruler sits on the throne and claims to be emperor, not one that everybody listens to anyway. And that's the time period that this game takes place in. And we'll be playing the role of Liu Bei, where in the fantastical stories, he is a people's hero. And with Liu Bei, we'll be starting with nothing, and ideally, we'll bring peace and unification to China should everything go our way. Bumps in the roads, characters who clash with us and with each other, all of these things will allow us to tell a robust and unique story. Being a grand strategy, there are other NPCs out there and they have their own personalities, goals, and desires. Friendships and rivalries will spawn, and from those, potentially, grand alliances or civil wars, making our conquest to the throne either easier or more difficult. But there is only one inevitability during this time period. Off in the distance, that slow rumble isn't thunder. No. Those are the drums of war. Let's play. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns, chaos ignites, as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Yet the light of the dynasty still simmers in the hearts of its last descendants. Liu Bei swore an oath with his brothers. They pledged their lives. They will defend the Han. Nobody else can. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion and seizing commanderies across the realm. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. Yet despite the...
Be watchful. Embers rise. Stop. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion. Luoyang lies in ruin, my lord. This tyranny is barbaric. What's of the people? Dong Zhuo has fled west to Chang'an, with the young Emperor Xian his captive. He holds my nephew at sword point. The coalition delays and wastes time. You are poised, ready to strike now. But yellow turbans and bandits still persist. There must be justice. The people deserve peace. Your sworn brothers are ready to fight. Their oaths were bound long ago. Dong Zhuo's treason must face justice. We are arrows on the wind, my lord. We fly wherever you command. And so the first page of the first chapter of another book of war is opened. And we, well, we will be the ones in control of that narrative. Welcome to Total War Romance of the Three Kingdoms, everybody. If you don't know what a Total War game is, well, I hope to be explaining it the best of I can as we play. There's a lot to it. It's what's known as a grand strategy game, and I adore grand strategy games. So I'm much, much more familiar with Paradox types grand strategy games. The Total War ones, I haven't played since Medieval, Medieval 2, maybe, uh, though I have put some time into Three Kingdoms just to try and get the basics under my belt a little bit here. And as we play, I'll be able to tell the story of how Liu Bei either succeeds or fails at uniting the entirety of China here around 900 CE, I do believe. Now, I initially majored in history in college, but it was a focus on US history, uh, history in the world, uh, a little bit of European, but Beyond that, pretty much nothing, though the era of the Three Kingdoms for China is something I'm both semi-familiar with, but when it comes to the details, not familiar enough with. It's just a very interesting time where politics and war and backstabbing were running rampant as there was no true ruler here in China. And that's when our game takes place, and that's really all you need to know, because from here on out, history will not be repeating itself in any way. As we open as Liu Bei, we have a lot of things to talk about and a lot of things to cover before we can truly put a foothold here in China and start taking what is rightfully ours. First, we must establish our power. Lord Liu Bei, Dong Zhou has seized the emperor and now wields imperial power to his own tyrannical ends. The Han Dynasty must be saved, even if you must take their lands back by force. First, we must defeat the nearby Yellow Turban insurgents, and then find a place to build our strength. Nearby, Tao Qian and King Rong are Han loyalists who may offer us aid. The time to act is now, my lord. This being a grand strategy means we do need to deal with not only the nitty gritty of war, but the larger grand scheme of things, of politics and positions and re of relationships. The big players in this game all have their own goals and their own personalities, and that can tug at your very own empire if you have two people sitting in positions of power who dream of very different things. Civil wars can break out, treaties can just snap, and internal turmoil could be the undoing of your entire empire. But for right now, we must make our way past the Yellow Turbans, who are basically rebels in this game, uh, and push past them to make our way uh, to a little area nearby that we can hopefully take for ourselves, an iron mine, and start consolidating power. We also must protect Kong Rong and Tao Qian. They are our most loyal members here. So our first mission is quite simple. We must elim eliminate Zhao Bo here and take down his yellow turban army. And in return, we'll get a taste of victory. For three turns, we'll get 30 supply military supplies, which is great because we need military supplies to ensure our military is fed. And we'll get a morale boost worldwide. Now, the great thing about morale boosts is that in combat, uh, we not only deal with the actual health of our units, but the morale of our units. And if the morale breaks, so too will our troops. And they'll go running for the hills, not listening to a single thing we say. 
But before we go into battle, I want to give a quick overview of our own military, so you have an idea as to what we're doing here. So if we click on this unit, uh, honesty in the each army can have up to three generals, and they each general will have up to four units under their command. Here are our current four generals. And of course, the first one is Liu Bei, the one who is not only just a general, but attempting to be the leader and the main character of this particular story. Liu Bei is a commander. We're going to go over it real quick. Um, he currently is on his way to level three. Now, there are two ways you can actually play this game, two modes, romance mode, which is what we're playing, and then records mode, which is what we're not playing. The difference, very simply, is that in romance mode, the graphics are a little different. They're a little spiced up and kind of brought to life a little bit more. Uh, but our heroes all level up. They have skills, they have uh, personalities, and they can get gear and equipment and all kinds of neat things, um, where in records modes, those particular generals can die, they're mortal, uh, and it's not nearly as fantastical as it is here in romance mode. So Liu Bei is a legendary character, uh, and he's a legendary commander. He excels at inspiring friendly troops, but he's weaker in melee than most. He's best grouped with retinues of melee cavalry, so if we send him in, we're going to want him going in with the cavalry to give them a benefit uh, for riding in. He has a bunch of stats that we'll go over here in a minute, but he has a poor background. He is minus 25% percent income from family estates because he is was not born uh, apparently as rich. He's going to get plus four public order though because people love him and he's going to get minus 50 percent upkeep from militia infantry making uh, the infantry much cheaper. Their uh, men are more uh, or soldiers are more willing to fall under his command under a cheaper price because of how much they respect him. He commends honor but he opposes cruelty. So should we ever find anybody that loves cruelty but opposes honor? then they may end up clashing and could cause us problems in the future. Also, uh, we have gear and all kinds of stuff and stats. So, really quickly, Liu Bei has got three traits to him. He's kind. He's a kind man. Um, he gets plus two resolve, plus six authority, plus five to satisfaction, and plus two to public order for this particular trait. He values kindness and opposes cruelty. He's also humble, which gives him a, a plus two to resolve, plus six to authority, no desire for higher offices, um, which won't matter too much, uh, I think, right out the gate. He has plus 10 to satisfaction. People will be satisfied working for him uh, easier than most others. And he decreases ambition to gain independence as administrator. So our in administrators will hopefully not vie to break away and uh, of seek seats of power on their China's own and will be happy under Liu Bei's command. Fraternally, he al he's also fraternal rather, plus eight resolve, plus 10 satisfaction, and he focuses on friendship. A brother might not always be a friend, but a friend like that, but a friend like this is always like a brother. And we have all kinds of skills and relations that we don't really need to worry about right now. Um, it's just to know that he is uh, Zhao Yun, Guan Yun, Yu, and uh, Zhang Fei are all oath sworn to us. Uh, While well, these two are oath sworn, whereas Zhao Yun is just honorable and he's loyal to us. Uh, Gong Zhuan is friends, but you know, no check mark next to him. And over here, um, uh, Lu Zi is a cruel man, and so we don't really get along with him. Um, weapon wise, we're not going to do too much over here. We're going to keep his unique weapons to him. They give him a huge boost to resolve, instinct, and authority, as well as some very good damage. Uh, the armor, we don't have any extra armor. And we only have our spare mount, and we got a couple followers as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and assign a follower to him. It's not going to be this merchant because it's not going to matter all that much right now. And then this uh, this guy we're going to go ahead and give only gives plus four cunning, minus four authority. These are randomized, by the way. This is in my playtest. This is not the same people I had, uh, not with the same bonus. He's a refined eunuch. He gets plus four to cunning, minus four to authority, uh, which is kind of a bummer, but we have such a huge boost in authority right now, it might not matter. Unlocks assignment counter espionage, ooh, so maybe a spy. Minus 10 satisfaction faction wide, but minus 5% corruption. Um, but only if this character is prime minister, heir, or faction leader, which he is currently not. So the bottom two don't really matter. It honestly might not even be worth assigning either of these right now. But we have an accessory as well which gives plus four resolve and plus four satisfaction. Um, it is a wooden ox, a common item. 
Uh, the plus four to resolve m might be good, but we're already legendary in there. We might want to give it to somebody else. Uh, let's go over our stats real quick so you can see uh, what's going on here. So we are a general. He has a grudge against Dong Zhou, which we already knew about, and uh, he has some past loyalties to the Han Empire. Expertise is all about construction costs and melee evasion. So it's kind of like a a civilian. It seems to be for the most part, each one is like a kind of a civilian slash city management benefit and a, a melee or a military benefit. So that's that's expertise. Resolve is 42% health increase and 6k population growth. Uh, we are legendary in resolve. Once you cross 100, um, you break into legendary. So we are 104 of 200. Cunning, plus 7% ammunition, plus 2% military supplies, which is fantastic. Instinct is plus 5 melee damage and minus 1% recruitment cost. These are at our current ranks. And in authority, we currently roll with nine, plus 9% 9 satisfaction and plus 16 unit morale. These will all go up and down over time, hopefully just up. The forest has Zhang Fei is a legendary character as well due to his instinct being very, very high. Um, he is legendary repute. He excels at breaking through enemy troops, however, and he's weaker against other generals, so he's not going to be great on one-on-one -on -one fights with other generals, so we'll be keeping him with shock cavalry and pole arms. So Lu Bei and Zhang are going to be more kind of morale boosters for a lot of, uh, for a lot of our troops. Um, he's sa super satisfied right now with, in, with our status, with our situation. We can take a look at his stats and our relations specifically with him. We're not going to worry about that right now. Um, I'm mostly worried about throwing in maybe a follower under him if we really wanted to. But unlikely. And then this will give us plus four to his resolve, which is pretty close. So let's actually go ahead and equip this to him. He'll be carrying that uh, to bump his resolve even further and maybe even make him legendary there. His weapon as well, much like the one we have, is not going to be nearly worth replacing. It's a unique weapon, the Serpent Spear, um, and gives him a bunch of benefits, so we'll leave that there. And finally, we have Guan uh, Yu, who is also legendary due to his resolve, which is fantastic. Um, he has a legendary weapon as well, but let's take a look at him specifically. He's a legendary champion. He's best used to engage enemy generals, however, weaker against units. So he's the ver the opposite of the other two, and he gets a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of benefits, including plus 15% armor from all spears, uh, plus six morale when defending, plus one resilience just in general, uh, due to being a god of war, which is awesome. I love that that he is a god of war, and he's level four, the highest service, level of Seek opportunities of them all. Upon them. Well, without further ado, I'm not sure how much is going to make it into that cut. For China. Let's take out the Zhao Bo. So this is going to be a decisive victory on ours. We're likely not going to lose much. Um, however, uh, we could just delegate it to our generals and this is, this is auto resolve. But what we're going to do is just start the battle. The and uh, I want to see some blood. Warlords and brutal tyrants. I weep for China. But only we can provide the salve that the people sorely need. We must restore the Han Dynasty to its rightful place if we are ever to know unity, stability, and peace. So here's our current battle. There's not much to really concern ourselves with. The veteran Zhao Bo is going to be the one leading this army here. And we're going to try and get our friend, um, our dear friend over here, to duel him when we can. So we're going to send him pretty much straight up front. We'll put him right at the front here. Uh, and this is the Battle of Dong Iron Mine. So the plan here is for Lubo to head in with the cavalry on the left hand side, uh, trying to hit the left flank. Meanwhile, right up the center, both of the. Um, whoop, Both sets of archers are going to run up to midfield and hopefully just bombard them as best they can. While the rest of the foot soldiers, I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take these three and move around the flank over here. And then take these four and run up basically behind um, the archers here. And then with him, I'm going to charge and try and get a duel with him immediately. And if we can, if we can duel him, which we hopefully will be able to do, he'll break away. We'll have an honorable duel wherever we meet in the battle. And if he ends up losing, the morale of their troops should plummet. 
Only one way to find out. Let war begin. War awaits in the distance, and the first battle to claim land that belongs to us begins now. Our men charge off into battle, prepared to take down anything that stands in our way. One of our strongest generals charges ahead to duel the leader of this army. With this duel, I will defeat you. he hopes to break the morale of all of those who follow. And so in the middle of battle they meet, and off his mount he is knocked. Our general swings in as the armies surrounding them clash with one another. A large fight between two giants of battle begins. This duel could dictate the flow of this battle. Men charge past, some stop to watch. As our general gets knocked to the ground, he'll be fighting for a while. We'll rejoin him shortly. Their morale already begins to break, being peppered with arrows as our men encircle and flank them, pulling back as fast as they can. The yellow turbans seem to value their life more than the unification of China. Back to the duel in the middle of the field, our general still stands and dies just as quickly. The battle is all but won. A few of the enemy's men have not broken. Decide to stand ground. There is honor in that. Pride for what they stand for. But they will not win as our cavalry sits against the sunset, cheering for the victory they've earned over the corpses of the dead soldiers beneath them. And a win indeed for us. A swift and decisive victory indeed. We only lost 94 men, while they lost almost 400. We had over 1,100 men remaining, and they had less than half of what they started with. Now we have to decide what we want to do with these troops. And it's a pretty easy decision this early on. Uh, but our choices are pretty simple. Ransom and release them. Um, we could also just seize their military supplies, or just take who will join us and replenish 5% of our troops. Now granted, we only lost 94. It's not really worth throwing 5% away. We could take $109 straight out and gain a little bit more unity among our faction. So, we'll ransom and release those troops. We are Lu Bei, so uh, being a peaceful man isn't out of our character here. Forgiveness, no. Freedom, yes. Lu Bei and his brothers face the Yellow Turban Scourge. Taste of victory. Attack an army belonging to the following factions in battle completed. So we got our little benefit for completing that mission. But now, we have something else. We still have to s kind of position ourselves and, and put down a, a, a foot of power here in China. In restoring the Han, we'll take all of our strength, Liu Bei. You must crush the local yellow turban stronghold, seize it for yourself, and bring peace and justice back to the people. Only then can you focus on greater matters. And that is true. Luckily, the mine is nestled right within the mountainside here, and we must destroy them. Let's take a look at what these are real quick so you understand what these pop-ups are. Um, but this is kind of just a checklist of things we've done. Uh, so this is the Dong Iron Mine, the most recent one. Um, this is our quest here. And then it's our mission success, which we've accomplished. Yep, same thing. These are all just things we've already gotten. And then over here, we gained some ancillaries from that combat. Dual War Axes, Wunox, the Eunuch. Oh, and this, this is what we started with, I'm sorry. This is the stuff we started with. And a Great Glaive, I didn't realize we actually had a Great Glaive. Is that worth throwing up there? Probably not. Yeah, it's really not worth throwing on to anybody right now. And then we'll leave this mission here so we keep in, uh, a little reminder of it. And right now, we just need to get over here. Now, this shouldn't be too bad, but we'll be attacking a city here. It's going to be a bit different on our tactics depending on the defenses, but for the most part, we're looking like we're going to be taking this one uh, pretty decisively. We could break siege, stop being besieging and retreat, which we're not going to do. We're just going to jump in and we should be able to wipe them out. 
This battle is going to be very different for us. We need to capture the city for it to be ours. And what's sitting inside hopefully isn't too bad, but do you see these turrets here? This tower, these nasty, nasty things, do a lot of nasty damage to our uh, commanders. What we need to do is get our men up here and per push through this first. If we can capture these towers, we'll have a nice, easy way in to the fortress. But the goal is to get over here and just take it for ourselves. There's not much that we can see as far as their defense is concerned. And honestly, we may end up repositioning and coming in from the right flank. And I think that's exactly what we're gonna do. If we can, we can come in through this forest here and have Liu Bei push through here. That way there's not these turrets over here that could potentially do any nasty damage. Swing in, come in from the side and just make our way in and hopefully just kind of take this quickly and peacefully. So let's take all of our men and let's move over here first. Now let's set up similar to what we had going last time. Simple plan, assault head on, let the uh, heroes follow in suit. Let the battle begin. The first skirmish was nothing. This battle is the beginning of everything or the end of it all. If we can take this mine, Liu Bei has a place to call home in his capital. The depths, but breaking through this fortified line of this mine is not gonna be an easy task. Watch towers on each side. Sit and wait. While men barricade the front with their bodies and shields. Their armor not of the best quality, but they have courage. I'll give them that. Beyond them, archers sit atop the hill, waiting for those who can press by in cavalry to break the ranks that could get through. And even beyond that sits the mine itself, the thing that we're here to capture and call our own. We have our work cut out for us. This will not be like the fight we endured on the open fields against a single general and his small retina retinue of men. There will be losses here. Friends, fathers, brothers will die. But their bodies will not be forgotten and China will be built upon them. The plan is simple. Our generals are wait in the forest, protected, hopefully, by the trees from archers, while our men run in, throw themselves at the towers, and ideally overwhelm them with sheer force. And then, when they've fallen or weakened, and those towers belong to us, then our generals will move in and take what's ours. The first body to fall lies on the side. Another one glides across the ground, but not enough to stop them from ramming into those who stand in front. Behind us, the rest of the army makes its way through the trees. Their archers change focus from the cavalry to our men. But that will not stop us. As the towers will become ours, and the bodies will melt beneath our swords. There is no commander here to save these mines. No commander to duel our generals. Just common folk with weapons, armor, and basic training. They will hold here for as long as they can. But our archers are taking position and beginning to riddle them with arrows themselves. Lu Bei runs in along with his other generals as they mash through. Lu Bei will stay in the back end here, watch his men, ensure that they stay happy. And their morale is high, and that is going to be it for their line. We've broken through, and now their back cavalry is going to be charged as their men retreat back to them, and arrows fly upon their bodies. Pushing our way through their one gate, even their defenses can't stop it. We've circumvented their other towers, and now we look to get above them. That was one of our generals doing a huge attack over here, killing multiple men all at once. He's in his element here. Into the thick of it is where he belongs, and that's all he cares. Charging others. 
sweeping wide. Our men continue to push up. Looks like the rest of their reinforcements have arrived. Charging in. Though they're wielding bows that can't bode well for them. Most bodies on the ground belong to our enemy here. It's a good sign. The rest of our men are coming in from the back to flank those that are being sandwiched by our others. Finish them all out. And way back here, it seems that they still have troops running. Whittled down by our archers as best they can. Picking them off here and there. That's all that was left. They surrendered. And now Liu Bei has a place to call home. Another decisive victory. Uh, we lost a lot more that time, though for the reason being, uh, probably because I tried to force everybody up one particular row, but Liu Bei should be proud. Now we need to figure out what the hell we're gonna do with the city, and I think, quite simply, we're just gonna occupy it. We don't wanna loot the hell out of it, then occupy it. Um, we don't want to lose a level on this place or anything like that. This is our first true victory. As our little advisor is saying, their defenses have fallen and now we have, they cower inside and await our judgment. And we are Lu Bay. A simple occupation. We'll lose 20% of the population, but we'll gain 45 income, 10 faction support, and 10 military supplies. It's going to do us some good. It would be we'll take it for ourselves. And we've officially brought peace to this, to Dong Iron Mine, our first true foothold here in China. We got support from the people, which is public order is gonna be fine. We're gonna get more faction support, which is great. And we completed the quest. With this settlement's liberation, the people here are freed from opposition. It is a small start, but significant. All of China must know this same freedom. Bonus experience, Liu Bei ended up getting a thousand, which is awesome. Uh, he definitely hit level three, which is great. Through tireless efforts on behalf of the people, we will grow stronger as warriors and as kin. In this way, there is nothing that we cannot do. And we have a new mission. With a rallying cry, Liu Bei draws more to his cause. It is time. War looms like a pregnant storm cloud and the rain soon must soon fall. Forces must be gathered. Send out the mustering call and grow your armies. Only when the people have answered your cry can you march to war with the voice of China at your back. Recruit and maintain a total of 17 at the start of a new turn. We currently have 15. That's not bad. Uh, we'll end up getting Growing Might, which will give us plus 50 bonus experience for units per season and 10% uh, replenishment over the course of three turns. This is, should be a pretty easy thing to do. Um, and that'll be, give a nice little bonus to healing and we'll replenish some of our troops that we've lost in our struggle to take this mine as our first true foothold. And here, you can see kind of the start of, uh, of the way the war is going to go. The question is, which way do we expand? All many, many things that we're going to have to worry about over the course of uh, our particular war story. So let's clear out a little bit here. So we have a quick little update over here. New capitals have been established. The Yellow Turban Rebellion has now is in Wudu Town, and Liu Bei, ours is the Iron Mine, the Iron Mine, and our mission that we completed. So let's go over a little bit of faction management, town management, uh, because that's a big part of this game as well. Um, right now, all we have is the Dong Iron Mine, which is fine, uh, and we have a few other options that we need to pick uh, and play with a little bit here. So Liu Bei ended up leveling, so actually let's go ahead and give him a skill point. He has his own skills that we can move into here, and we have a few that we wanted to, we can choose from. We have Clarity, which is going to give us plus 8 to Authority, minus 25% building upkeep, which actually might be incredible right out the gate too, uh, especially since, you know, we're starting with a little bit of a tighter purse um, with only one town to play with, though we do have 11,000 uh, to our name. And we get a plus 50% line of sight. We already have stone, work bul uh, stone bulwark. Mobility, 
plus eight per, uh, to our authority, which is also great, plus 10 morale when attacking, fantastic, and plus 25% battle running speed, also super great. So our choices right now are dignity, which gives us plus eight uh, to our instinct. It gives us uh, the disciplined ability, which we'll read about here in a second, and a plus five faction to support. So the discipline does not, we do not suffer a morale penalty when the general dies. Uh, it can also rally after routing more often. That's actually really great if we end up sucking a lot. Intensity is plus eight instinct, mighty knockback, and plus 25 charge speed. Causes extra damage when knocking back enemies. So basically we have to decide, do we want to just be a passive or do we not? And I think passive is probably the best for us right now. And the faction support just to really lay claim to everything is uh, I think what we're gonna go with here. So let's go ahead and click on that and we'll apply that, and it definitely bumped our instinct. We have a new passive ability, or a new ability, rather. Now, let's take a look at Dong real quick. Uh, Dong Iron Mind, it's our current capital. It's faction support. It currently is only 10 out of 100. They're not happy. It makes sense. We did just walk in and annihilate the, all of their defenses and decide and told them, hey, you are with us now, um, but we're gonna get uh, plus 60 faction support until we have, and we have two turns until they fully support us. Um, right now we have minus eight public order, minus 15 to our military supplies, and minus 30% of our income. Not a, Again, not a huge deal. Population settlement is 41,000 right now. Uh, 3K from growth in next season, and a total of 3K change this turn. We have no bonuses from it right now, um, but we will be getting bonuses uh, sooner rather than later when out of this town. The public order is going to be public order is going to go up uh, next season simply because we have a lot of uh, people garrisoned in there, and you're not going to be able to do anything. And it's giving us 140 each turn. It's not terrible. I think we're going to go ahead and sink some money in right away. Uh, we'll upgrade the mine. It's going to give us a nice bonus to our income, some prestige. Uh, well, actually, it just looks like our income. So let's go ahead and up click upgrade, and that'll take a turn. And I think we're just going to let everybody just rest here in town for a while. Now, I'd love to give the city an assignment, something to do. Uh, but right now we can't, because the current way to... We don't own the capital of this commandery, and the, com the capital of that commandery unfortunately for them, is Dong over here. It's a small city. We're gonna need to take this, and I think that's where Liu Bei, as he kind of unscrolls his map, realizes he needs to move next if he's going to ensure that those around him are going to obey. And once this city is taken, once this small town is under our heel, we can start looking at the bigger picture of those around us and maybe start making peace with some of them bring some to our side, and leverage them against the enemies that claw at our borders. Lube has got a lot of work ahead of him, and so do we. War is long, brutal, and painful. But China needs peace, and Lube is going to bring it.